happens tomorrow. I know the interest in casualty figures, and all I can say is it's not possible to have solid casualty fi figures uh, at this time. And uh, the various components are doing roster checks, and we'll have uh, information at some point in the future, and as quickly as it's possible to have it, it will certainly be made available to each of you. Uh, I'll be happy to take a few questions after uh, asking uh, First General Shelton uh, if he would like to say anything, and then we will allow the others to make a remark or two. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, as the Secretary just said, today we have watched the tragedy of an outrageous act of barbaric terrorism carried out by fanatics against both civilians and military people, acts that have killed and maimed many innocent and decent citizens of our country. I extend my condolences to the entire Department of Defense families, military and civilian. You're listening to, to General Hugh Shelton, who is chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Who lost loved ones. I think this is indeed a reminder of the, tragic, the tragedy and the tragic dangers that we face day in and day out, both here at home as well as aboard. I would tell you up front, I have no intentions of discussing today what comes next, but make no mistake about it, your armed forces are ready. Chairman, Chairman of the uh, Senate Armed Services Committee, Carl Levin. Senator, this is Senator Carl Levin of Michigan, Our Chairman of the focus Senate Armed on Services Committee. Recovery and helping the injured and the families of those who were killed is matched only by our determination to prevent more attacks and matched only by our unity to track down, root out, and relentlessly pursue terrorists, states that support them, and harbor them. They are the common enemy of the civilized world. Our institutions are strong and our unity is palpable. Senator John Warner. Thank you. As a past chairman, uh, the uh, Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, was holding a news conference at the Pentagon. Uh, we have just heard from the Secretary and then from General Hugh Shelton of the Joint Chiefs, who said that the that there would be a military response. Although he said that he was not prepared to discuss what it would be, he said, "Your military is ready." And uh, Senator Levin then uh, told us that uh, the Republicans and Democrats are completely united uh, in, the, uh, in the effort to do something about what has happened today in the United States, the worst terrorist attack ever. And as we have heard from Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld, which reminds us that President George W. Bush is expected to address the nation uh, later this evening as well. We're joined now by NPR's diplomatic correspondent, Mike Schuster. Mike, uh, this is not the first time the World Trade Center was the target of a terrorist attack. No, uh, that's true, Robert. A little history here. In 1993, there was a bomb that was exploded at the World Trade Center, and at that point, only six people were killed, but hundreds were injured. Four Muslims were arrested for that and put on trial, and in the investigation uh, uh, afterwards, uh, it became clear that, in fact, their intention was to topple the, the World Trade Center. So that's a, a very important starting point to maybe understand, perhaps, who may have been responsible for this. Uh, and, go ahead, it, by Robert. the way, clear from the trial, why the World Trade Center? What it signified to them that they wanted to topple these buildings? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think that uh, it, it was a, a big symbol, a big target and something that would be spectacular. And I think that issue of spectacular action since 1993 in terrorist acts against the United States is something that has motivated uh, uh, terrorists and those who are planning these things. Uh, in the Millennium Plot, which emerged in late December 1999, it, it, it seems clear that whoever was, uh, perhaps, who, whoever brought those explosives from Canada into Washington and ultimately Los Angeles International Airport was the target, that was going to be done in coordination with an attack on a U.S. warship uh, in Yemen, which didn't occur at that point, and attacks on uh, U.S. tourists in Jordan. So this notion of coordination and, uh, uh, and the effect of such 
coordinated attack on the psychology of the United States was, has been clearly in terrorist minds for some years now. Any other aspects of today's attacks that you see that are, that, that are similar to terrorist actions in the past? Uh, uh, I, I think that um, the, the one thing that we have to look at as well is who might have been responsible, and there's another connection to the World Trade Center, and that's in the person of Ramzi Youssef, who uh, is believed to have been the mastermind of the first attack on the World Trade Center. He was uh, kidnapped, in effect, by U.S. agents in Pakistan, taken to New York and put on trial and convicted for masterminding that. Uh, and Yusuf himself, in the early 90s, uh, was discovered to be plotting against uh, perhaps a dozen U.S. airlines in the Far East to have coordinated attacks as well. So there's this issue of aviation, hijacking, and coordinated attacks um, that seems to have culminated in this attack today. But, I mean, isn't there a qualitative difference, though, here, in that these weren't just attacks on airlines, these were four hijackings by people who, it seems, were skilled enough to actually pilot these aircrafts, their targets? There's no question, but there, there are camps in Afghanistan and Pakistan that have trained terrorists. They have been soldiers in Afghanistan, soldiers in Pakistan, and other parts of the Islamic world. They could very well have uh, piloting skills as well as explosive skills and they may have been mustered if in fact th th those are the sources of this attack for what happened today. Thank you very much Mike. Okay Robert. NPR diplomatic correspondent Mike Schuster. Linda? Within the past few minutes the president has arrived back in Washington. He landed at Andrews Air Force Base and he plans to address the country in just over two hours time. NPR's White House correspondent Don Gagne joins us now Don, do we know what the president wants to say? We can assume that he has a couple of goals this evening. First